Hello and welcome back to app for you In this particular video, we are going to discuss a new problem from greedy algorithms, right? So basically the problem is n meetings in one room. Very interesting problem. And before explaining this problem, I hope you have watched my video on the activity problem, right? The activity selection problem, I hope. Right? That particular problem, I have already been discussing that. Right, the maximum number of activities that can be completed in a given interval. So, having said that, so basically, I would suggest you to watch this particular video first to get more idea about how actually things are working, and then you can jump to this particular problem wherein we have to find n meetings in one room. So, basically, the problem in simple words says that you are provided with a data, and the data is you are you know what is the starting time and the ending time of every meeting okay so there is a meeting which is scheduled to be held at start at 1 pm ends at 2 pm suppose another meeting starts at 3 pm ends at 4 pm another meeting is starting at 12 and till 6 another meeting at 5 till 7 another meeting at 8 till 9 another meeting at 5 till 9 so this is how the meeting schedule is prepared now the question clearly says that there is one meeting room in a firm okay so there is only one meeting room okay in the firm and there are n meetings in the form of si of fi which is to be scheduled okay where si is the start time of a meeting i and fi is the finishing time of meeting i okay so basically we know that there is only one uh, meeting room in the firm and there are n meetings to be scheduled in the form of start time given and the end time is given so where si is the starting time and fi is the finishing time so what is the maximum number of meetings that can be accommodated in the meeting room when only one meeting can held in the meeting room at a particular time obviously if you have one meeting room then obviously at a particular instant of time you will have only one meeting taking place there so likewise what is the maximum number of meetings that can actually be held in this room how many meetings can be conducted in this particular room okay such that in this given time interval the given time intervals okay so also note that start time of one chosen meeting can't be equal to the end time of another choosing meeting okay so basically the start time of one chosen meeting whatever meeting you choose its start time cannot be equal to the end time of the other chosen meeting so basically the start time should be strictly greater than the end time of previous meeting that is what they have mentioned and we are familiar with this condition from the activity problem also right so we will just follow whatever we had uh, followed in case of the activity problem right so i'll be just doing the code here now we know that i need to keep track of the starting time and the ending time together right moreover moreover the logic in the activity problem was to sort the jobs on the basis of their finishing time or end time right we have to basically sort the, the the algorithm the better algorithm or the most optimal algorithm for uh, you know solving this particular problem of finding n meetings in one room is similar to the activity problem what we need to do is we will basically sort the end time sort the uh, jobs on the basis of their end time like right? and we know that if we are going to sort them then this array will be modified but this won't be modified right but we know that we need to keep track of the corresponding start time also how is that possible so one approach that we had come up with in the previous video or uh, in activity problem was creating a vector of pairs right so vector pair int comma int right so this is my vector pair let me give it the name meet okay so this is basically the data for meeting so this vector pair is created and this particular uh, vector pair will basically hold the elements in form of pairs right so we will have starting point and end time of every meeting what we will be doing is next is we will declare a variable i suppose and let us run a loop from 0 till n and i plus plus what next now we know that uh, we are provided with the start time and the end time isn't it so we are already provided with the start time and the end time the start time and the end time is with us what we need to do we need to basically push them in the vector pair that we created that is meet so we will say meet dot push back what will we push back? We will push back the pairs start of i, comma, end of i, right? So this data is given. What will happen? This will basically be pushed. Now the moment we push it, what is the next stop? The next uh, next job. The next job is basically to sort them, right? On uh, on the basis of this will be start. 
the next job will basically be to sort them on the basis of their ending data ending time all right i hope now it will be comfortable to write the code uh, okay before that let us do one thing let us first quickly copy the example okay the example that we will consider so we shall consider this example here i'm just copying it for reference so that it will be good to explain here right uh, okay so let me just put the comments somewhere here all right so i'm just commenting this fine so we are basically provided with the data fine so we have they have been given that we have n equal to 6 basically six meetings are to be taken place and you have meeting 1 meeting 2 meeting 3 meeting 4 meeting 5 and meeting 6 right and the start time is given and the end time is given the start time basically is 1 and 2 3 4 0 6 5 6 7 8 9 5 and 9 now you see the data given here is basically sorted but we should have a general approach we will assume that data is not sorted that is we will assume that the meetings are not sorted on the basis of their end time and hence we should sort it right so for that particular thing what we will be doing is i hope you understood why we are creating peers so here basically we are successfully successfully created the peers now it's time to basically sort our data in order to sort our data what we will do we will write sort and we know that we have created the new array uh, vector of peers so basically its name is meet so meet dot begin from the starting point and meet dot end till the end and we should have a mechanism to sort this right so i will be creating another uh, function to compare i have already discussed about this in the previous video on activity selection problem right so i will suppose use comparison here cmp so i will be defining the cmp function here so basically it will be static bool also already explained why we are using static here you may previous watch the previous video static bool and i'll write cmp right now we know that it will receive as arguments two vector pairs because the moment i will be creating the vector pair meet we know what we will have we will be having this pair 1 comma 2 right 3 comma 4 0 comma 6 5 comma 7 8 comma 9 5 comma 9 right this will be my vector and you see the existing pair right the first this is called first and this will be second right this is basically corresponding to meeting 1 meeting 2 meeting 3 meeting 4 meeting 5 and meeting 6 right but the index will be 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 only okay this is the index fine so we will basically pass these array elements and the array element is nothing but vector pairs right that is why we will receive here pair integer comma integer and we will write a suppose m1 meeting 1 comma another pair of integer comma integer and we shall write uh, m2 that is meeting 2 fine so having said that what we can do is basically we can define the function to return suppose when m1 dot now what we are going to compare basically we are going to sort this array elements in the ascending order on the ba basis of their second value because second value here represents the ending time and we are going to sort in on the basis of their ending time so basically we will write m1 dot second pointing out to the second uh, to end time less than m2 dot second fine so that's done so this will be returning accordingly and our array will be sorted in the ascending order of their ending time once that particular job is done as usually what we do we know that the very first element of this array after sorting whatever will come that will definitely be selected right the very first element at index 0 so that is why i will assume here a uh, recent okay let us create a pair sorry on this let us create a tracker okay to keep track of the recent meeting that was held so for that i will say recent and now recent will be what it will basically hold this array element and this array element is of type pair so pair integer comma integer recent is equal to meet meet is the name of this vector 
of zero. So basically, it will point to the very first element. Great. Now what we can do? Now we can basically uh, keep track of the meetings. If you, uh, now this is now whatever I will be discussing right now is optional, right? Now I may be interested to know which are the meetings that can actually be held in that particular room but in this question we are just interested to find the maximum meeting that can be held let us do both the thing in this particular problem so for that i'll be creating another vector suppose vector of integer x okay what will it do this vector of integer x will basically keep track of what are the meetings that can be held in that single room possible meetings that can be held in the single room now we know that the first meeting will always be held so i'll say x dot pushback what x that push back now what is the uh, id number of the first meeting so obviously uh, we know that the index is obviously zero the index is obviously zero zero one two three four and five suppose okay the index is obviously zero but it will be one more than the index right the id is one more than the index so that is why i'll say here me dot push back zero plus one now zero is actually the index position but the id will be saying the first meeting so zero plus one okay done what else now we will basically run a loop from i equal to 1 till less than n i plus plus as we used to do in the activity problem now we will compare if the starting time of all the other meetings are greater than the end time of the recently meeting that has taken place so if it is greater strictly greater as mentioned in the question then we will consider that meeting so basically i'll say if starting time so meet dot meet of i sorry meet of i dot starting time is basically indicated by the first as mentioned here this first indicates the starting time right so meet dot first if meet dot first is basically strictly greater than the recent the recent meetings second value and recent meeting second value is nothing but the end time of the recent meeting then what shall we do we should push the id of that particular meeting means that meeting will be held in this room only x dot push back what should we do basically we'll push the id of that particular meeting so basically i plus one we know that i is the actual index and plus one will basically give me the id of that particular meeting right so i'll be doing this so okay let me just give a minute let's just give me a minute let me think on this whether it will be good uh, whether this id will be actually correct so let's not get a confusion right so i think there will be a slight mistake if i do this so i'll be discussing this later uh, let us do one thing let us not keep track of the meetings just keep the track of the count so count integer count equal to zero right and i'll just say here count plus equal to one that's it nothing else count plus equal to one okay and again we'll update the most recent meeting so basically most recent meeting will be basically updated to recent is equal to meet of i that's it okay and initially count will be one sorry because the first meeting will always take place and see i'm starting from the next meeting onwards so first meeting will always be considered and it will go on and finally i will be returning count okay so let's see how the code is running You can see the output is 4, the code is working fine. Why the output is 4? I can give you the explanation. Okay. So see, assuming I have already sorted, assuming I am the in this step, because after this step you will get this. This is the structure, right? The sorted elements. Now you see, the recent will basically point to this particular job, this particular meeting. The end time of this particular meeting is 2. And so I will move from the next element to the last meeting. So from here to here, I'll keep on traversing and I'll check if that particular meeting starting time is greater than this or not. So starting time of this particular, so, so far the count is equal to one, right? Because I'm in the first meeting. Now, if you focus on this, this is three and it is strictly greater than two. So obviously count now increases to two. And this recent will now point to this particular element, this particular meeting. Now the end time of the recent meeting is 4 and the start time of the next meeting is 0 obviously this is less than this so i will not consider this meeting rejected so first is considered second is considered come to this meeting the start time of this meeting is 5 and the end time of the recently visited meeting is 4 so 5 is greater than 4 strictly greater than 4 true meeting possible in this room move to the next room so i move to the next meeting so 
IIT is basically uh, starting time is 8 and the okay uh, if you consider this meeting 3 so recent will now update it to this right this will be the recent meetings end time the starting time of this meeting m5 is 8 which is greater than the end time of the recent meeting so true it will update it to 4 move to the last meeting the starting time now the recent meetings end time becomes 9 because this meeting was considered now starting time of the next meeting is 5 which is less than the end time of the recent meeting 9 so obviously this meeting will also not be considered so we will have only four meetings possible in this specific room so if this is your schedule if this is the plan that has been provided accordingly maximum four meetings will be possible in a single room right so yeah that's all from this side if you talk about the time complexity then obviously we are just doing sorting here right this is the most costly uh, step here so this is taking order of n log n by the most efficient sorting technique right time complexity is order of n log n and considering the space complexity obviously we are creating an extra vector right to store all the elements and this will depend upon the number of meetings that is order of n okay so yeah that's it from my side i hope this video was helpful in case of any doubt please feel free to put your doubts in the comment section and just like share and subscribe thank you okay so uh, sorry <laughs> before going i should submit the code right so let me just submit the code i was in hurry it's all right so okay let's give him time fine that's it so yeah that's all from my side hope it was helpful thank you